Hey everyone, I'm a Hawktail player for me and CW. And what we do is we tell real stories that actually happened. And they are all true. So today I decided to tell you all a story about my dad when he was a little boy sailing in Belize going spear fishing. Now this story, remember, it's true, it really happened, and it was told by a real person, my dad. So while I tell you all this story, just remember that I am going to be telling it in first person, which means I'm going to be pretending I am my dad. Are you guys ready to hear the story? I hope so. Okay, here we go. So, there was this time when I was a little boy. I was about, let's see, 12 years old. My family and I decided to go sailing along the Belize coast. How many of you all know where Belize is? Well, Belize is a country all the way down by Mexico, close to the equator. It's full of coconuts, big palm trees, tons of sea life. It's the most magical place on earth, let me tell you. Well, on this particular day, my family and I had sailed to the best reefs to go spear fishing. Do you guys know what reefs are? Well, reefs are almost like plants and trees and bushes that you see every day outside, but underwater. So when you go diving down underwater, you see all these pretty, almost tree-like formations that are colorful and beautiful and vibrant, and they have fish swimming all through them, using them as home and a shelter and all those big things. So that's what reefs are. Well, this one reef was the second largest reef in the whole world. Can you believe that? It was massive. And the captain had told me that day that this was the spot to go spear fishing. Do you guys know what spear fishing is? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so you all know throughout the story what I'm saying when I say spear fish. Spear fishing is a type of fishing similar to fishing with a fishing rod. However, you're not using a fishing rod. You're using a really long spear. And I'm going to say it's about here on me. So a little bit taller than I am, and it's pretty heavy. It has a spear, it has a rod, and it has the trigger. So I'm going to explain it and break it down for you just a little bit more. So when you're holding a spear gun, you're holding it like a squirt gun almost. But instead, you're underwater, so you're swimming. And in order to get it loaded, you have to pull back that rubber band that I mentioned and clip it on. And then you have to hold trigger, and as you swim and you find a fish, so I found a fish right now, you pull the trigger, there goes the spear into the fish. Now, in order to get the spear and the fish back to you, there's a little reel on the side of the gun that you can reel it in. So you reel, 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 and there you go. You have your spear and your fish. You take the fish off, you hook it on, and you put the spear back on, and you load it back, and you're ready to keep swimming and find more. So that's what a spear gun is. And it was pretty hard to operate, but I still did it. So the captain and I, we were ready to go out and spearfish. I jumped in the water with my mask and my snorkel, which helps me breathe when I'm underwater. And I had my flippers on that are long, and it helps me swim like a mermaid. And I was ready to go. So we swam. I'm going to swim. Ready? Here I go. I'm swimming. Swimming, swimming, swimming. I swam so far. I turned around. I can even see the boat in the water so far. Out in the middle of the ocean, the waves were hitting us, the seaweed was swimming all around, and I had to be careful because the coral and the reef is so close to me, I have to keep an eye out on it because I could just touch it at any second. The reason why I said I had to be careful is because, one, if we touch coral, if human fingers touch coral, it automatically will kill it because of the oils on our hands. So I had to remember I couldn't touch the beautiful coral because it would kill it. I also had to remember that some coral, like fire coral, can hurt you. 
if you accidentally catch fire for all your skin will burn like you just caught fire. So I had to be careful of not touching the coral for myself as well. So I had to keep all those things in mind while spearfishing that day, but that didn't stop me. I kept going and I wanted to find the biggest fish to cook for my family for dinner that night. Well, an hour goes by and we didn't find anything. Nothing, zip, nada. There was no fish in sight to cook. And I mean, there were plenty of other fish, but we couldn't eat those things. They were too small and that wouldn't be nice. So, I was like, you know what, I'm going to dive down into this one reef and kind of go inside, but not touch it and see what's in there. Because I had this feeling. Well, I hold my breath. Everyone, let's hold their breath. One, two, three. And we're going to dive down deep into the ocean with our spear gun. And we're going to go down in that reef. Ready? Three, two, one. We're under the water. There it was, the biggest fish I had seen all day long. And phew, what do you know, it darted across my face, bubbles were splashing, I was swimming, can we swim? Let's swim together, me and the captain, we were swimming to catch this big fish. And do you know what it was? The biggest grouper I've ever seen in my life. Do you all know what a grouper is? A grouper is a white fish, it can grow the size of me and even taller to the point where it can eat a whole human whole. Can you believe that? And I saw it and it was the size of my shoulder and I chased it and I found it. But this fish was way smarter than I was. It took shelter in the reef. You remember how I said reefs are shelters for some animals? Well, this grouper was smart. I mean, he knew what he was doing. That's why he was so big and he's been living for so long. But he hid in that reef for a very long time and the captain and I decided we need to come up with a plan. So we did. The captain decided he was going to swim back all the way to the boat, which is far, far away, while I was going to stay in the middle of the ocean Keeping my eye on this grouper while waves were hitting me and the sun was beating down on me. And I was only 12, so that was kind of scary. But I did it, and I stayed brave. And the captain went, and he got the, the flashlight and another flashlight for me, and we were ready to go. He finally got back 45 minutes later. We looked at each other, and we said, let's go down together and find this fish. So... Everyone, let's hold our breath, dive down together, and find this grouper. Ready? Three, two, one. <gasps> there it is. I have seen, I'd seen the grouper, and I decided I was going to take the shot. But I looked at the captain, I remembered, and he said, do it. So I got my spear gun and I aimed it as best as I could and I pulled that trigger. Pew! There the rod went. And I waited and I waited for something to happen. No grouper. And all of a sudden it shot out from my face and I thought I caught it, but I didn't. It swam and it swam and I swam and I swam after it. But that big grouper disappeared in the deep dark ocean until eternity and I never found it again. But that didn't stop me from spearfishing. I've even taught my daughters how to spearfish and we have caught many groupers since then. And I've learned that no matter what mother nature throws at you, you have to keep going and you have to keep trying. What have you guys learned from this story?